Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Hi. Let's let's get started. I uh, there is a lot of uh, ground to cover, so sorry if I speak a little bit fast. Um, hi again. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Joel Travieso. Uh, I'm a senior triple engineer at Fort Kitchens. You have my contact information there uh, below, and you'll have it at the end, uh, anyways. And uh, welcome to my presentation: Continuous Integration in Urbana Tricks to Reach. Uh, heavily automation. Uh, this uh, presentation is basically about uh, sharing some um, experiences slash code uh, slash ideas uh, about some uh, stuff we have been including in our uh, uh, continuous integration uh, workflow uh, for a year or two while we have been working on the on a project we have been working at that time uh, at the project for Ithaca College who's Actually, product owner is uh, in the audience today, um, and uh, uh, we are very proud of we have uh, what we have achieved uh, on that time in our uh, continuous integration workflow, particularly using Circle in this case, and uh, we wanted to share some of the uh, cool stuff we we are doing as part of of that. Um, the, one of the first uh, challenges we faced when we started building that pipeline that allowed our devs to focus on just uh, the development part of the process and not how that uh, code is transported, um, was uh, a problem we were facing with uh, Pantheon multi-devs. Um, basically, we were using this workflow where we were creating multi-dev uh, environments per each pull request we were creating in GitHub. Uh, and the problem basically was that uh, every time we merged one of those pull requests into the master branch, we would uh, remain with a multi-dev in Pantheon. And I remember by that time, and I'm not sure if that continues to be the case, but I remember there was like a hard limit of 10 multi-devs. So once you reach that, uh, you, you basically you couldn't build any uh, additional multi-dev environment. So all, all our uh, circle builds will fail from there on. Uh, so that started to be a, a very annoying problem. Uh, it could escalate very quickly. So uh, the first uh, aim at a solution was basically going to terminals and trying to find something to include in, in the in the config.yaml file that could uh, basically tackle that process. There is actually a command in the build tools library to remove uh, multi-devs associated to open pull requests in GitHub, but it wasn't working by that time. So we uh, took a, a more custom approach. We had everything. Uh, we needed to do that. Basically, uh, using that same uh, build tools library of terminals, uh, you can list all the multi devs you have, and it gives an output like that you are uh, seeing in the, in the screen. In the first column, you can see uh, the name of the pull requests. Pull requests. Uh, I mean, sorry, the multi devs, which are named after the pull request they represent. So basically, the, the convention we are using a convention a naming convention that's basically PR hyphen the, the ID of the pull request that corresponds to that particular multi dev. So basically, we 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 were able to tie each multi dev to a particular uh, pull request in GitHub. Now we didn't know how uh, we didn't know which of those pull requests were already closed or merged and which were uh, still active. So uh, basically for that, we needed to communicate with the GitHub API, and uh, our script, the script we, we wrote, what, was basically executing that uh, first command we we're seeing above, and taking the output, parsing the output to get the ID of each uh, pull request associated to each multi-dev, and with that ID, query the GitHub API, so we would, we would get the whole information about that particular pull request, including whether or not that pull request was still open or not. And in case it was closed, which is the, the last line, uh, basically running another terminus command to close, uh, to delete the, the multi-dev because it's no longer useful. Uh, this is based, uh, you can see it in, the, in line 17 there, uh, no, no, line, line 19, uh, this base of that function, get PR object, which is, sorry, which is this we are seeing here. It's basically a call uh, get request to the GitHub API. You can see we are using credentials from GitHub, and we will be using a lot of credentials to communicate with many of the uh, services we are using. Basically, those credentials, you can set them up in the uh, Circle interface, in the environment variables uh, interface of Circle so they can populate from there to, to anywhere you send them. Uh, and that's, that's the way we solve that problem. It, it 
runs pretty smoothly uh, up, up, to, up to now. And uh, uh, below you can see it's not very uh, visible there, but you can see like a very, very quick uh, a description of the GitHub API. It's, there are a lot of endpoints, endpoints for pull requests, issues, commits, reviews, and many others. It's very versatile, uh, so look it up. Uh, it, it gives a, a lot of, of opportunities. Uh, some of the challenges uh, that, uh, that you face when you want to uh, get to extreme automation in your process, one of the most important is the, the, the uh, uh, difficulty at prioritizing this kind of, of, of work. Basically, uh, this uh, problem we, w we just described was a, a very difficult one, was a, a something that we really needed to address. But not all problems are, are like that, so sometimes it's really difficult to get priori priority for this kind of, of work. Also, sometimes uh, clients fear of unexpected consequences. I remember this, this same sol this uh, solution we were describing. Uh, at the beginning, we, we, we were facing an issue that from time to time, the script will remove all multi devs, not just those who were uh, 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 closed. So that, what, that, that remains in the mind sometimes of the client, and that, that creates uh, some uh, problems in, in order to uh, extend the automation in the process. Of course, there is a lot uh, always of uh, resistance. Uh, to change, don't touch if don't touch the, the whole thing if, if it's not just failing, and uh, there is uh, the problem of over automation, which is a real problem because automation is us usually very fun. Uh, so sometimes you find yourself uh, basically automating just for the sake of auto automating, just because it's fun, and uh, you really have to look at whether or not you 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 should be spending that time on on automating. Um, Sorry. Um, so this is uh, one of the one of those cases where we struggle to have priority assigned to this uh, problem. Basically, our Git flow uh, consists of a master branch. We have a develop branch, which is kind of intermediate branch, a release branch in the middle, and we have all our pull requests uh, pointing to that develop branch. We uh, release in a timely basis. We don't release when we get to a particular level of completion but we just release every week or every two weeks, sometimes we change that uh, boundary. Uh, we release every week or every two weeks, no matter what we have by that point, uh, as, as long as we have something. Uh, so basically we use the same release branch for all releases. And uh, all our pull requests uh, point to that release branch, not to the master branch. So one of the things we wanted to uh, make sure uh, is that no uh, branch is pointing to the master branch ever but all of them are pointing to that uh, develop branch. And what we do for that, it's again, uh, querying the GitHub API and asking for the base and head branches of each pull request and blocking, I mean, ma making circle fail on every build uh, when those conditions are not met. Basically, if the base branch is master, the, the head branch must be developed. And we also included an exception that if you included the hotfix word in the title of the pull request, we would allow then that to happen because we identified that we will have some cases where we actually want to merge pull requests directly uh, into the master branch, not to let it go through the, the release process. Um, and in a similar uh, kind of solution coming from a similar problem, uh, right after, uh, basically we, we merge that develop branch into the master branch every week or every two weeks. But that develop branch, it's the one who fits the dev environment in our uh, Pantheon uh, site. So as long as we don't have a pull request coming off that develop branch, our dev environment in Pantheon doesn't get, us, it doesn't get updated. So basically, every time we merge that develop branch into master, we need to make sure the next time there is a difference between both branches, a pull request is created from the develop branch uh, to master. So what we do is, again, communicating with the GitHub API, you can see that the quick script there, which is different because it, it's, uh, in this case, it's not a post request, it's a get request. I mean, it's not a get request, it's a post request because we are sending information, the title, the body of the pull request, and we are sending the head and the base branches of the pull request. We are not actually committing anything, we are not actually changing anything. This, this uh, request will basically fail 
either in the case that uh, there is no um, difference between the branches or in the case that uh, there is already a pull request existing between those branches. Um, it will fail, but it will not make the whole circle build fail. So it's very, it's very safe just to just call it. And we call it just in the cases where we are deploying to the dev branch, which are on the only cases where we actually uh, uh, merge, I mean, where we, where we actually need to recreate that pull request from develop to, to master. So, so we don't call it, uh, uh, we, we call it always with a, with a reason or, and in the right uh, moment. Um, some of the uh, questions that come to mind when dealing with this is whether, uh, I mean, where to run uh, uh, these advanced automation steps. Uh, one of the uh, options, and that's that what we have been talking about, it's making it part of your continuous integration delivery platforms. Uh, in this case, using, for example, Circle, but you could be using Travis or Jenkins or anything else. Uh, the obvious uh, uh, advantage of that is having a unified vision of everything, what you're doing every time you build uh, uh, an environment or, or your Circle builds. Basically, some, if you have stuff in, in spaces like Cloud Hooks, I mean, Pantheon, uh, Quicksilver, or Akia, Cloud hooks, uh, you, you, you have uh, automation steps happening from two different fronts. So uh, making it part of your continuous integration uh, uh, config that YAML file, it kind of unifies uh, the process, which is good. The good part of using cloud hooks is of course consistency all across the board. Uh, stuff gets done uh, every time there is a code deploy or a code merge, uh, it, it doesn't depend on whether or not circle is the trigger of the, of the event. Uh, of course, there is another difference to consider, and that's that uh, there is not, there, they, they, they don't have the same context. You don't have the same information available in those two, so sometimes it's a deal breaker. You, you can't just use either of them. You, you must uh, choose one of them. Uh, one of those examples is uh, communicating through Slack. The classical communication when you, your build fails and you get notified that your build failed. Um, in this case, a, in our project, um, we have a different approach. We don't just send a notification to a general channel saying the build failed. We notify the particular <laughs> user that's the author of the pull request whose build failed. So it doesn't get as annoying as, annoying as it is when we just send notifications to the general channel. Obviously, we're using Circle 2.0. Uh, you can see there we're using the when attribute on a step, uh, which is an attribute that allows us to react to a failure ca case and other cases, but in this case, the, the, fa the failure of the whole build. And what we are doing in, in the script, sorry, we have at the beginning, we, have, we are pairing GitHub usernames to the ID of those same users in the Slack space. And then we are requesting the pull request object, getting the author of that particular pull request and sending a, a post request to the Slack API with the ID of, corresponding to that same author and a message uh, to, 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 to say to that uh, person in, in Slack. And you can see there the, the function that does that, basically sends a post request through, uh, to the Slack API using the text uh, that you want, uh, the text of the message you want to send, and the, uh, the channel in this case is, is the idea of, of, a, of a Slack user. Um, the Slack <coughs> API, again, it's, it's also very wide. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff there, very versatile. You can handle channels, files, uh, conversations, groups, uh, private messages, even stars. So <coughs> look it up uh, if you're interested in that. The Jira API, it's pretty similar. You can see the canonical form uh, above. Um, below you can see like uh, an example of uh, getting all the comments uh, associated to a particular, uh, I mean to, a, to an issue in Jira of a particular ID which is provided as a parameter. It's again a cruel call uh, get uh, request to, to the Jira API with the, of course, with the information to authenticate to the Jira API <laughs> and uh, with the idea of the issue to request the, the correct issue and in this case, all the comments associated to it. This, is, this gets used in, in our project with, uh, with this, inside this script where we basically, every time we build a pull request, 
I mean, we, we, uh, every, every time Circle builds off a pull request, it posts a link uh, to that build in the ticket whose ID f is part of the title of the pull request. Basically, if you have a pull request title, IC-501, it searches for a ticket that's named like that, and it posts a link to the build there. So you have uh, a, connect a, a very straightforward connection between your, um, your, uh, your tickets and your builds. And what's doing is, again, getting the, the pull request, getting the, the issue ID of, uh, from, from the title, and sending a message, uh, which happens in the last line, and sending a, uh, uh, invoking a function that basically comments on the, on the ticket on Jira. Um, and this is the function, basically. Uh, here, you don't actually get to see what we are posting. It's that dollar text variable. Um, but what we actually do is not just posting the link, which is the most important part, but we also uh, post some uh, important information like statistical tracking of how many times the build has failed and uh, who's the uh, person in, on top um, charge of, of reviewing the, the pull request and stuff like that. So it, so it, it can get uh, uh, very wide. It's not just about posting a link. And you can also remember, you can also uh, use the Jira fields. You can create custom fields on issues on Jira, so you can use those fields too. You don't necessarily have to use the comment thread for actually putting this kind of, of information. Um, just a second. So this is another fun thing we do. Uh, we have kind of a uh, automated change log building giant included in our uh, circle workflow. Uh, what we do, basically every time circle builds, if it hasn't done, been done before, uh, so, uh, we, we make a commit from the virtual machine where circle is building. Uh, that commit is basically adding the title of the pull request into the changelog.txt file. So at the end of a release, we have a changelog.txt file with the titles of all the pull requests listed. You can change that uh, to whatever you want. We just use the title, uh, but you can include as much information as you want. Um, of course, the first part of that is checking that the file already uh, doesn't already contain that line because otherwise you would be in, a, in an infinite loop adding that same, um, that same line again and again. And if, it, if it's not included, uh, what we do is basically uh, yeah, making the change and adding it and committing it and pushing it because your circle build runs in a virtual machine that has a local repository uh, quite like the one you have in your computer. So basically committing in your computer is the same thing that committing in the, in the virtual machine. Uh, so that's the way uh, that works and it, it's, it's pretty fun. We have also um, some tags to um, skip this uh, step. Sometimes it's convenient to not include a particular pull request in a, in, a, in a change log. So we include those tags in the description of the pull request and it comes with the uh, pull request object when we request it. And also to alter the, the, the content of that line we are going to add to the change log uh, that takes the file. And uh, another last example, uh, this also uh, opens uh, a little bit of, uh, I mean, this is a little bit about our migration process, which is probably another talk, uh, content for, for a totally different talk, but we have, a, we have a legacy site that can be subdivided in different subsites. So what we are doing in our migration process is we are migrating uh, each of those subsites independently into a migration environment, and there the content moderators uh, go to adapt that content for the new site, and once that, that process is completely done, we run then another migration from that particular migration environment into the live environment where all comes together. Um, uh, one of the problems of that, we are using an approach where we don't have all the configuration files imported uh, in every environment. We have the, conf the migration configuration files only imported in environments different from dev, test, and live because we don't have accidentally, accidental migrations, uh, direct migrations from legacy into live environment, for example. So uh, it's uh, creating a, a migration environment 
it's not just uh, creating a multi-def a multi of, of the dev environment, it's making sure the right configuration files are imported into that uh, migration environment. So uh, what we do is, uh, what we use automation for, it's basically we create, uh, uh, if we, uh, we create a pull request and we include a tag in that pull request with the name of the migration environment, uh, uh, the name we want to give to a migration environment. If that's the case, uh, instead of treating the pull request as a normal uh, pull request and create a, a PR hyphen PR number uh, multi-dev, we, we will create a different kind of multi-dev with a different set of configuration files uh, uh, and a different name. So next time the, 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 the first, that first script we were talking about, the one who removes uh, pull requests, uh, the next time it runs, it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't remove the, the multi-dev associated to migration environments. Um, I, don't have, I don't have the code available for, for this. I couldn't uh, wrap it up on time. But basically, that's the idea. It's, it's something that's still in progress, but I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to work um, well. Um, so that's all the shiny keys I, I have for you um, today. Uh, I think the bottom line of the conversation is uh, sparking uh, ideas and, 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 and uh, giving an extent of how much we can automate and sometimes how much time and how much effort we can save in a daily basis. By, uh, by, by automating all the things. Uh, so uh, only left for me to uh, invite you to join us in the contribution sprints on Friday, uh, fill up the survey and reach out to me. I will be, uh, let me see how much time we have. Oh, we have a lot of time. Um, yeah, we're on time uh, actually. So yeah, uh, we don't we don't have a lot of time for questions now, but I'll be around. So if you want want to reach out, uh, reach out to me here or go to the Four Kitchens booth, which is a pretty fun place to go, by the way, um, or reach out to me online uh, at those endpoints. So thank you very much.